When a lawyer violates one of the model rules, it counts as lawyer misconduct. There's other things that can count as lawyer misconduct as well, such as getting convicted of, of committing a felony. We have a rule, ABA model rule 8.4, that kind of brings all these things together that co would constitute misconduct by a lawyer under one big rule with a lot of subsections, A through G. You're likely to have a question or two about this on the MPRE, and uh, we're going to go through each of the sections here. I'm Drew Stevenson. This is for my professional responsibility class. Let's dive in. Rule 8.4a begins, it is professional misconduct for a lawyer to violate or attempt to violate the rules of professional conduct, knowingly assist or induce another to do so or to do so through the acts of another. Now, let's stop and unpack that for a moment because I want you to see that there are at least three ways that this could appear as a, sort of a confusing test question. The first is, it's a violation of this rule to violate any other rule. Only lawyers would have a rule that says it's a, against the rules to violate other rules, right? But that's what we have here. And what this means in practice is that when the state bar disciplinary authority brings an action against a lawyer, let's say does a disciplinary action to suspend the lawyer's license or for disbarment, they're likely to tack this on as an additional charge in addition to whatever by vi other violations the lawyer has committed. And so it can give um, the disciplinary authority a little extra leverage in that sense. Um, so even if it's a little hard to prove the other rule violation, you violated this rule too by violating um, that rule. Or if there's some reason for which they can't discipline you for that rule, for that rule violation, they could still discipline you under this rule. Secondly, we have an attempt uh, provision here. And that means that if a lawyer even attempts to violate another rule and then maybe fails to carry through, they get interrupted, um, there's a natural disaster or a lockdown, um, if somebody pulls the fire alarm, uh, or the lawyer just uh, rethinks it and gives up or something like that, the lawyer could still be subject to discipline for a a clear attempt to violate one of the model rules. And so watch out for that. The lawyer will not get off or avoid the disciplinary uh, responsibility just because the lawyer wasn't able to complete their intended plan of action. And if the lawyer violates any other rule through someone else, through an employee like a secretary or a law student intern or a paralegal, it has them kind of do the lawyer's dirty work or as a friend or a client or someone else like that, do the lawyer a favor and do something at the lawyer's behest that is a violation that's going to count the same as if the lawyer did it herself or himself. And so you can't escape uh, liability under the rules to or escape being subject to discipline just because you had someone else go and do the misconduct for you. Okay, this 8.4b, we're going to have a lot of comments in the comment section about this uh, particular subsection. It is professional misconduct for a lawyer to commit a criminal act that reflects adversely on the lawyer's honesty, trustworthiness, or fitness as a lawyer in other respects. So notice here, it the qualifier is very important. It's not true that every misdemeanor uh, conviction or traffic violation or something like that could cost you your law license, but some criminal convictions. And so sometimes I see lawyers being disbarred for fraud, for drug charges, um, like in the picture here, uh, for uh, domestic violence or things like that. Basically, if you're going to jail, you're almost surely also going to lose your law license as a result. We'll come back to this in the comments. C and D, it is professional misconduct for a lawyer to engage in conduct involving dishonesty, fraud, deceit, or misrepresentation, or engage in conduct that is prejudicial to the administration of justice. And so for C, notice that this would be true even if you weren't convicted of a crime. So there are some types of fraud that maybe no one charges you with or can, um, can prove that you did, but if the state bar is convinced that you committed some sort of fraud or dishonesty, 
deceiving people, lying to people, and it's serious enough, you could be subject to discipline for that, even though it's not a violation necessarily of any of our other rules. So, for example, we have some rules about candor to the tribunal that would it would be a rule violation to just lie point blank to a judge. Uh, but, uh, you know, if the judge asks you a question, but there's other types of deception and lying, like lying to your client or things like that, that um, could have you be subject to discipline. Or, or another one would be that you are caught. Uh, it's It turns out that you plagiarized a document in law school and um, a, a paper or something like that. And now your plagiarism, you publish something under your own name and it's proven that you stole that um, written document, then you that could count under this. And D is things like obstruction of justice and again, destroying evidence, even though we have other rules that might cover that. E, it's professional misconduct for a lawyer to state or imply an ability to influence improperly a government agency or official or to achieve results by means that violate the rules of professional conduct or other law. So there are people that are really bad about this. They go through life name dropping about all the important or influential people they know, and they um, are claiming, implying, therefore, that they have influence and can pull strings or call in favors. So a lawyer who's telling clients, oh, I know the judge and he owes me a favor. I know the lawyer on the other side and, you know, we're, we're friends and I'm sure he'll like want to agree to our settlement of the case or something like that. If it's improper and it's a government official or you're telling a client that you should be able to bribe the jury or something like that. Um, even kind of like bloviating and bragging about how you're able to pull strings and go behind the scenes and get things done would constitute a violation. F. It's a, a violation to knowingly assist a judge or judicial officer in conduct that's a violation of the applicable rules of judicial conduct or other law. Now, please watch out for this um, when you take the MPRE. This will come disguised as a question that you about a judge violating the code of judicial conduct. You might panic and think, oh no, this is some obscure section of the code of judicial conduct I'm supposed to know about. But pay attention, the call of the question might actually be about the lawyer who is helping the judge do this or helping cover up what the judge did. And so watch for judicial misconduct questions that are basically embedded in questions about that are really about 8.4F. And it's, they're asking about the lawyer, not the judge. And sometimes on the MPRE, they will try to trip you up in that regard. Let's talk about some of the comments. We're going to have a separate lecture about um, Section G that I'm going to get to in a moment. About 8.4B, many kinds of illegal conduct re reflect adversely on the fitness to practice law. And they give a couple examples. And the, in my experience, this is what you're going to see probably as likely examples on the MPRE as the examples that come from the comments, um, a lawyer who's committing fraud or not filing their tax returns, right? Or committing, or both, committing tax fraud. And so that type of conduct, you, you can just assume is going to be a serious enough criminal violation to also have the lawyer be subject to discipline. But the comment two continues that there are some kinds of offenses, even criminal offenses that don't carry any such uh, implication. Uh, traditionally, they would draw the line at uh, um, something called moral turpitude. So crimes of moral turpitude could get you disbarred or subject to discipline, and crimes that uh, did not involve moral turpitude uh, might not. Well, the problem is that nowadays moral turpitude could be construed to include offenses concerning matters of personal morality, like adultery or um, a, a cohabitation or things like that, that some people would find morally objectionable, and um, but are, the actions are not illegal. And so they have no specific connection to fitness to practice law. And maybe even if there was some sort of technical violation um, of the law in a criminal conviction, it doesn't really reflect on the lawyer's character. On the other hand, uh, uh, though a lawyer is personally answerable to the entire criminal law, a lawyer should be answerable only for, to the bar, only for offenses 
that indicate a lack of those characteristics relevant to law practice. And so here I have a picture of a lawyer uh, being arraigned uh, in court. And so you're not above the law because you're a lawyer. So if you um, get caught uh, driving while intoxicated or something like that, the fact that you're a lawyer doesn't mean you won't you, that you'll get away with it. But there's going to be a subset of crimes that are serious enough that we think they reflect on your character and fitness to practice law. Any offenses involving violence, including domestic violence, dishonesty, breach of trust, or serious interference with the administration of justice are in this category. Okay, uh, last comment here that I want to talk about. A pattern of repeated offenses, even ones of minor significance when considered separately, can indicate indifference to legal uh, uh, obligation. So there's an old case about a lawyer who had 100, like 700 and something, um, unpaid traffic tickets or unpaid tra and was eventually suspended because the lawyer was a scofflaw, right? They were just not paying their traffic tickets. They wouldn't have been subject to discipline for getting a ticket or even having a lot of tickets, but they refused to pay tickets and uh, pay their, their traffic fines. And they had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds that have been going on for a long time. And so it really started to look like this lawyer just has no respect for the rule of law. And if enough repeated violations start to add up together in the aggregate, that could um, be grounds for the lawyer to be subject to discipline. And that concludes our lecture about um, Model Rule 8.4, sections A through F. I'm going to continue with section G, which is what was added in 2016 in a separate lecture video.